Hello again, and here we are with part four of the project. We're going to get a roof onto this thing. Now, I can't stress how important it is that this roof be a really, really strong structure. The horizontal logs in the wall sections are tied together with pegs, but the wall sections and the posts are still not attached to each other. Now the posts are held in place at the bottom because they're sat down onto that 2x4 frame that we built. And now what we need to do, what we need to get from the roof is a structure that's going to hold the tops of the posts in place, tie the whole building together at the top end. And in this particular case of course it's even more important because we're going to have the ground pressure from behind the building because we're building this thing underground. I'd be interested to hear any comments, questions or criticisms. But with that said, let's get started from the point that we left the last video with all the walls up. Let's get the roof on. So the first thing is to decide and cut the roof line. I discussed with the line with the customer, set a chalk line and cut it by hand, but it would be worth using a guide system if you've got the opportunity to do so, because it's important to get this line quite straight. So with the first wall cut, I just transferred the line across to the other three walls and got those cut to the same line. So with those lines cut, I then sank a wide plank into the top of the walls on the two sides, front and back. And this plank is 15 centimeters by five centimeters. And it was sunk in such that it stuck up above the line of the wall by five centimeters. And this plank is attached only to the posts and has a layer of insulation put in between. At this stage I just attached it with screws but I replaced those later with big bolts. Then I put in beams across the building. These beams are 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. And I laid them in by notching them into those two planks that I just put on the wall. So those are dropping down five centimeters into those planks and sitting on top of the posts. Then of course insulation has to go under every one of those joints and all the way along the left and right walls underneath those beams. And that was it for day one of the roof. Had to cover up as we're expecting rain. So I've got the basic roof supports in. I'm not terribly into measuring things so I just put them in roughly. And then I stretch this, these strings across the top and that tells me everything I need to know. It's actually surprisingly good, but it's obvious that 
This support is a little low at both ends. Once that was all levelled up, it was time to put pegs down through those beams into the top of each one of the posts. And also around about this time I replaced those screws that were holding the side planks with bolts. Okay, this is an ideal point to just make a couple of points. <coughs> Firstly, here's what happens if you try and drill through that insulation. It gets all bound up on there and the drill won't go any deeper. But about the, this drill bit, it's a 28 mil. And the reason I use a 28 mil is because, around here at least, your standard building plank is, tw is 22 mil thick. And what I've found is if you run that 22 mil plank through the table saw at 22 mil wide, so it's 22 by 22, then it goes very, very snugly and tight into the 28 mil hole. It's a perfect fit. Let me drive that in. So then I realized that there's one detail that I wanted to put in that I can't do before I put that beam in place and fix it. So let's get that done. And with that detail ready, I could then peg the last beam in place. So then with those beams in place, I'm going to infill the gaps in between with the same stuff, 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters, on top of the walls. Remembering, of course, as always, insulation in between there. And each section as it goes in gets attached to the beam above or to the left of it and below or to the right of it.
and then I'm adding in one extra beam. I'm sinking it into the beams that I've just put along the lines of the walls, so that's seven and a half centimeters off of the top log and seven and a half centimeters off of the the log that it's going into and the beam that it's going into. So at this stage I'll do a quick recap. Cut the walls all to the same line. I just used a chalk line, cut the walls all the way around. And then I put this one in. This is 15 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And it's effectively sunk into the side of the wall so it sunk into the posts and into the, the horizontal logs but it's only attached to the posts and it actually goes 10 centimeters down below the level of where we cut the wall and there's insulation trapped in between and that means that as the wall section I get a better angle so I don't know if you can actually see the insulation in there. But it means as the wall section drops, there's still these two surfaces which are trapped together with insulation in between. So this wall could drop almost 10 centimeters and we still wouldn't have a gap appearing up at the top. This will stay in place, the wall will drop. Now I attached, attached it on initially just with screws temporarily and then with these big bolts, not sure what they're called in English. But again, only to the, to the posts. So now what we've done is we've tied the posts together this way, so they can't move, but also up to a point this way. Now I said I sunk this 10 centimeters deep into the wall, which meant there was five centimeters 
of this still sticking up above the wall. So once I had this piece in attached to the posts, I then laid these big ones on. These are 13 centimeters by 13 centimeters. And got them to roughly where I wanted them and then sunk them into the 15 by 5. Not into the posts or the wall, just into the 15 by 5. Just did that little notch. So this post, this, this 13 by 13 is actually sitting directly on top of the post. So I did that with, with let me see, one, two, three, four, four of these big beams, the ones that are sitting on the posts. And then pegs through the big beams into every post. the same 13 by 13 stuff I infilled these pieces so they sit directly on the wall with insulation in between put them in and attach them through the big beams to each other all the way along bringing the top level up to the same level this one beam here is an extra beam because there's no posts underneath it but this gap was too big so I just did a half and half joint here, here, there, and sunk that in nice and tight. I use a, just use a handsaw to, to, to mark the places and cut them. And that you might think that it makes for a loose joint, but once the insulation goes in, you're going to need a sledgehammer to get it in there. Okay, and then I found my shortest support roof support and with a chalk line just snapped this line cut cut these all off and attached a 15 by 5 on here basically the same with the ends well it's very important that this roof is strong as I've said many many times so I've kind of gone overboard, as you can see here. So there is a peg going all the way through here. We've got the bolt under here. Also just took a little piece out with a chainsaw, two screws at angles in here and in here, trying to get everything as, as strong as possible. Now, this is an unusual case because we're going to be underground and the ground level is actually going to be coming right up to here so just below the roof line so there's going to be some pressure from the grip from the ground here we can get a meter and a half of snow in the winter and as that all melts this is going to get very heavy so as an additional measure I'm putting in these pieces. I'm just going to do, do two of these on this log and the next log. The next post, rather. I just cut this piece. I started with a 45 degree line here. And then this is this one's screwed in with three really big, hefty screws into this beam. And then I drilled up at 45 degrees right the way through here have to try and visualize the line so you avoid all the screws and the bolts and the pegs up to here again took some wood out with a chainsaw bolted that in just to give an extra bit of strength up here so that the building's not going to move and I think it was probably overkill. I'm certainly confident that it's, it's going to be okay. So the next thing will be, I'll be putting boards on it, this, and then some, I think it's called roofing felt in English, I'm not sure, but I think it is. 
and then we'll we'll carry on from there. That's the roof as it stands at the moment. Or the roof structure.